Welcome to Washington Hospital Today, dedicated to informing residents about healthcare topics and issues. Through programs featuring community forums and free health and wellness classes, our goal is to empower community members with the information needed to make informed health decisions. Washington Hospital has been providing health care to the residents of the Washington Township Healthcare District for the past 60 years. Hello, welcome to today's presentation, The Watchman Procedure, a new approach to stroke prevention, presented by Dr. Harsh Agrawal, cardiologist with Washington Township Medical Foundation. Dr. Agarwal is board certified in interventional cardiology, cardiovascular disease, and internal medicine. Prior to joining Washington Hospital Healthcare System, Dr. Agarwal practiced at UCSF Medical Center in San Francisco. He now contributes his experience to WTMF's cardiology care team as one of its providers. Dr. Agarwal's care philosophy prioritizes his patients above all else driven by his personal connection to the treatment they receive. His father's battle with heart disease has deeply influenced his perspective, cementing patient care as his top priority. With this commitment, he strives to improve the healthcare climate and enhance people's experiences. In his free time, Dr. Agarwal enjoys hiking, soccer, reading medical journals, and teaching. And now please welcome Dr. Agarwal. Hello, my name is Harsh Agarwal. I'm one of the International Structural Heart Cardiologists at Washington Township Medical Foundation. Um, and I am delighted to be here to talk to you about the new procedure that we have brought to our hospital and the foundation, the Watchman Procedure. It's a novel approach for stroke prevention. Uh, in this presentation, we'll look at uh, how does the heart work, what is atrial fibrillation, the connection between atrial fibrillation, or also called AFib, and stroke, treatment options, as well as some educational resources for our patients. Um, you know, these, this is uh, a disclaimer that I want to present, and then the opinions are my personal professional opinions. So atrial fibrillation, I uh, want to go over what atrial fibrillation is and how the heart works. Uh, the heart has four chambers, as you can see, um, the right and the left. Atrial fibrillation generally comes from the left atrium of the heart. Uh, the heart pumps together to make the blood flow in a synchronous manner. Uh, when anyone has atrial fibrillation, the upper and lower chamber of the heart become dyssynchronous, and that's the main issue during atrial fibrillation. Uh, as I said, AFib is a heart condition of the upper chambers of your heart to beat too fast and in a non-sequential or a chaotic rhythm. AFib is a very common cardiac arrhythmia. It's a growing problem, as you can see, from 5 million people in 2020 to 12 million people uh, in 2030 in America can be affected uh, by this uh, common arrhythmia problem. It can impact your quality of life, it can impact the, the lifespan, and there are several treatment options available. Types of atrial fibrillation, there are, you might hear this in medical terms, there are medical many types of atrial fibrillation. Sometimes it comes and goes, uh, stops on its own, sometimes it can last, and sometimes your heart is permanently in this rhythm. What that means is why why does it happen? People ask me, why does this happen to me or will it happen to me? There are a lot of factors that go into it, mostly high blood pressure, diabetes, if you have any sort of other valvular heart disease. Sometimes, you know, even sports can do that, intermittently genetic factors, alcohol consumption, obesity, sleep apnea, stress, heart failure, uh, coronary artery disease. There are a lot of factors that can contribute incompetently causing this rhythm. What are the signs and symptoms? Most people sometimes don't even know they are in atrial fibrillation until they come in contact with a healthcare provider or a system where they get a pulse check or an EKG. Some people do have fatigue, shortness of breath, or they feel their heart racing, something we call palpitations of fluttering of the heart, and they come to the hospital where they get checked out or to their primary care providers. Some rare cases, people do get dizzy or lightheaded when their heart rate is either too fast or too slow. Main issue with atrial fibrillation besides these is strokes. P 
people with atrial fibrillation have five times greater risk of stroke than any other population, uh, than anyone else who has a normal heart rhythm. And also, atrial fibrillation can put you at risk of blood clots. And the reason for that is because irregular heart causes blood pooling in the atria. And somewhere in the heart, there's an area called the left atrial appendage where about 95% of the clots are formed. And if there is a clot in this appendage, it can escape and travel to the brain or even the heart or kidneys, and especially the brain, and cause a stroke. Heart failure is a symptom when there is uncontrolled atrial fibrillation and your heart is beating too long, sorry, too fast for a long period of time. It can decrease your heart pump efficiency and can lead to heart failure. So atrial fibrillation has a lot of risks and complications. As I said, blood clots, strokes, heart failure, which can be life altering for a lot of patients. And as I sh as shown you here, this is the area of the heart where most of the clots form. Generally, during the atrial fibrillation, the clots form here and they can escape and go directly to your brain, which can cause a stroke. About one in three people will have a stroke in their lifetime if they have atrial fibrillation, which is a huge amount of patients. 90%, as I said, they come from this area of the heart called the left atrial appendage. And AFib-related strokes are more frequently fatal, more disabling, and larger and life-altering. You know, signs of stroke, be fast. We, we post this in our clinics in the hospital. If you have issues with balance, you can't see. If your face, uh, you know, one side of the face is drooping, if you have weakness anywhere, if you have speech issues, you need to call 911 immediately because time is of essence. Treatment options, we need to come back to that. So if you are diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, uh, we have to have two different pathways. We have to reduce the risk of strokes and we have to manage the rhythm itself. There are medications for the rhythm that, you know, your doctor can prescribe. Uh, including beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and multiple other medications. There are procedures like ablations to reduce or eliminate atrial fibrillation and lifestyle changes. For the stroke, there are medications called blood thinners or anticoagulants like Coumadin and multiple other medications on the market. And the procedure we called the left atrial appendage closure by the watchman device that I'm discussing today, that's another option. So as I said, atrial fibrillation has multiple prong approach for management, rate control, rhythm control, lifestyle changes, and of course the procedures to reduce the rhythm. The risk of stroke, again, most people do take blood thinners. That is the class one recommendation. And there are patients who cannot take blood thinners or are higher risk of bleeding, which where we talk about this watchman procedure or device to help reduce the risk of strokes. Oral anticoagulants or blood thinners, medications can reduce the risk of blood clots that could lead to stroke. And these are some antiplatelet medications that you might have heard like aspirin. They prevent the platelets from sticking together, but they are not as effective for stroke prevention. And they are stronger medications like anti-clotting medications such as Coumadin or Warfarin, uh, along with there are four other medications, Eliquis, Pradaxa, Xeralto and endoxaban, which are now on the market for blood thinning. And those are these medications up here. You might have seen them on your TV or, or through a healthcare provider. These are all blood thinning medications. People can take most of these medications for years without side effects, but because blood thinners help to prevent clots, they have you know, risk of other issues like bleeding. And when are you considering your treatment options, you have to consider risk of bleeding versus re risk of stroke because bleeding can be life-threatening as well. When you're in blood thinners, you can have spontaneous bleeds in your brain or your stomach. You can always also, if someone is at risk of falling or imbalance or older, uh, if you fall on a blood thinner, you can have major internal bleeding. So you have to balance these risks. So what is a left atrial appendage closure? So as I showed you, the area of the heart is it called the left atrial appendage. If we somehow close it, it prevents about 95 to 98% of strokes from atrial fibrillation. So left atrial appendage closure implant is a permanent solution for this so that blood clots can form and 
escape to cause a stroke. Uh, it requires one minimally invasive procedure that takes about 35 to 40 minutes. Um, and these are effective alternative to blood thinners. There are multiple clinical trials randomized now that show that they are non-inferior to blood thinners and actually better in terms of bleeding with blood thinners. So it's safer in that sense. And these implants reduce the risk of stroke without having to take blood thinners in the future. Uh, the Watchman left atrial appendage closure is the size of a quarter and made from very light compact materials used in many other medication implants like alloys. It is not made of metal. It does not go off if you go through a metal detector. So it's very safe, non-thrombotic uh, material. Uh, the Watchman implant, 96% of the patients who were in the trial got the Watchman but stopped their blood thinners in 45 days. So it was great for people you know, who were at risk of bleeding or did not want to be on blood thinners. It's safe, minimally invasive, does not require an open heart surgery. You cannot see it outside the body. It's done typically under general anesthesia of about 30 minutes and people can either stay overnight most of the times or we can even send them home the same night. Uh, the procedure itself, I can quickly go over it. We go from the vein in near your thigh. Um, again, you won't feel any pain because you have anesthesia. The watchman goes inside the heart. It's under general anesthesia. We keep you overnight. Next day, uh, you'll take your blood thinners for about 45 days and then we'll repeat the ultrasound. And if the appendage right here looks closed, then we take you off your blood thinners permanently. As with any medical procedures, there are small risks involved with Watchman implant. You can look at it. The risk of complications in any major clinical trials or registries were less than 1%. So very safe in our hands, obviously. Uh, we do a lot of these safely for select population who need it. Uh, we have a full team of uh, professionals who, who will evaluate you and make sure that you qualify and you indeed are a good patient for this. Uh, it's been more than 20 years that we have been studying the Watchman device. It, this is the third generation Watchman Flex device now. It's an FDA approved uh, for safety and efficacy to lower stroke risk in patients and atrial fibrillation not caused by a heart valve issue. Um, it has a long and proven safety record. More than 400,000 people have received it um, in the United States itself and much more in Europe and other countries. Um, who is the Watchman implant for? If it may be right for you, if you have an AFib not caused by heart valve problem, if you are experiencing bleeding while taking blood thinners, or if you have a lifestyle or a job or a health condition that puts you at a risk of bleeding, like you know, if some, some of you are bikers or hikers or mountain climbers who you think you know, you're at risk of falls, or someone who uses a walker or a wheelchair where you know, falling can cause internal bleeding that you know, talking to your doctor might be a good idea to see if some, this might be something that you need to do. Um, people who should not be considered, as I said, who cannot take oral, like even aspirin or Plavix, who cannot go any catheterization procedures, who have allergies to nitinol, nickel and titanium, have a left atrial appendage that does not fit, that's more anatomically, we can find that out. Um, and if you are taking blood thinners for any other condition besides atrial fibrillation, then I don't think you should get the Watchman implant. Costs and coverage, uh, Watchman is covered for Medicare uh, under the national coverage criteria, covered by almost all commercial insurances. Uh, while blood thinners must be taken every day, um, you know, it's an ongoing cost. This is a one-time procedure, one-time cost. You know, you can, and it does show financially it saves money over time because if you, if you have AFib, let's say, for 30 years or so, you get a Watchman now, you save that cost of blood thinners ongoing. So thank you so much. Um, I'll take any questions, please. Okay, thank you. We do have a few questions. The first one is, is there anything you can do to reduce the risk of developing AFib? Yes, uh, low alcohol consumptions, uh, you know, exercise, diet, reducing fat uh, in our diet. Also, uh, if someone has an ongoing chronic conditions like diabetes or blood pressure, to manage them appropriately can definitely reduce the risk of atrial fibrillation moving forward. 
Okay, and the next question, you mentioned that the Watchman is a one-time procedure. Is there ever a time where it would need to be removed or replaced? It's very, very rare, less than I would say 0.05%. There has been a case study where it can, someone had an infection in the heart, not on the Watchman device, where the whole you know, heart had to be transplanted. That's the only case I know about it. Watchman doesn't generally move once it's been deployed. It has been shown that in 0.02% of the cases that if the device moves, it can be taken out from the heart. So yes, it is possible theoretically, but 99.9% .9 of the time we do not do that. Okay, and the last question is, you mentioned an overnight hospital stay, but overall, how long does it take to recover after having a Watchman procedure done? Generally, uh, what we tell our patients, you, we make them walk the same day after the Watchman procedure, about six hours later. The next day, they are walking in the halls and go home, and we take, take it easy for one week and then go return to your normal activities like you were in a week. Wonderful. So. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Agrawal. This does conclude our program, and we want to thank you for coming in today for this insightful presentation. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in. The entire broadcast of today's presentation will be available on our Facebook page and YouTube.